Hello everyone, my name is Luna Moonbo and welcome back to Luna's World where we are in a crisis and we have bee escapees. So apparently my greenhouse is not a very safe place for bees and they have been escaping all over the place and I have been running around trying to save as many as possible. So we need to go back inside and see if we can get these guys latched back down again. Honestly, you think that looking after bees would not be that hard. Honestly, guys, but aren't baby bees just the cutest? Hello, dude. But it looks like now I've got all the bees back. I've converted all of these into beehives and I have fixed all of the holes that we had in the roof up here. And hopefully that's the end of our bee crisis for today. But in our last episode, we built this absolutely gorgeous greenhouse. And today we're going to decorate the interior and we are also going to get our villager carrot and potato farm set up as well. Also between episodes, I was very brave and I went back to the nether in search of another nether fortress because I lost everything in the last one and I needed to find some more blaze rods and some nether wart. I decided that this time I would dig round the one that I found and I to dig straight into a blaze spawner. I was sensible this time. I set myself up a nether portal and I was going to put a bed on the other side. I didn't want to lose everything, but of course I landed inside a deep dark cave, set my spawn and went back to go and tackle all of those blazes and get as many blaze rods as I could. Very thankful for my bow <laughs> and my fire protection armor. I got a little bit more brave this time but honest to god these blazes hit you hard and there were a few times where I did nearly die. I managed to get lots and lots of blaze rods though because I had looting three on my sword and I was starting to feel a little bit more confident in nether again. Look at all those blaze rods! I got well over a stack and I decided to go and put them back in the chest and then went off and found some nether wart but decided to leave some extra just in case I lose everything again. And this time I survived. I have nether wart and blaze rods, but let's not throw them away. But this finally means that I can now get on and start curing some of my villagers. But I have been up to a, another project off camera as well that I want to show you. Over on stream this week, I decided to let my audience decide whether to decorate my skeleton farm or my greenhouse. And the poll was 50-50. Would you believe it? But there was a brief second where it was 51% to the Scally farm. So that's what I've made. Ooh, it's a big drop down. But I've decorated it all in here now. Try to make it as bright as possible. Got some soul fire in the walls here. I've been able to get a sorting system as well. I will leave the description um, for the videos I used below. There was a few I had to use because this kept getting clogged up as well. And then I've also created a bubble elevator going all the way up, which I didn't die five times to make. And then we just have this drop down here. I had to put a slab in here because we are in an icy biome and it kept freezing. So this is my current skeleton farm. And at the moment, the only things I'm keeping are bones for bone meal because I seem to have a bit of an obsession with moss. So I've got some resources in here ready to decorate the interior. And then before we put the farmers inside, we're going to have to cure them. So I will be creating a zombie curing station at some point, but it's totally fine. This is all completely humane. <laughs> and the greenhouse has been decorated. I completed this on a live stream. It was a no commentary relaxing live stream. So you can go and have a look at that on my channel if you want to see how I did this. I'm really happy with how this has come out. As you can see, there's lots of honey being produced as well. And I have also added in the farmers who will be receiving the potatoes and carrots from the other farmer that is going to be harvesting them. I've put them in already purely through aesthetics. Are you okay there, little bee, twirling around on that azalea? <laughs> because it would have been much harder to have to navigate all of the decorating that I've done here to get them in later. So now that this is all done, I can turn my attention to the other villagers I want to bring in here and getting them zombified so their trades are definitely much cheaper. And this is my villager breeder house, but I have made some changes in that there are no villagers here. And that is because this is actually going to become my base. I thought it would be really cute to have a villager breeder house and to have the villagers all living in here. But to be honest, it's been nothing but a pain. They keep getting stuck, they keep dying, they're spawning iron golems, they're not tracking properly. It's a lovely idea, but I'll be honest, I now know why people build trading halls. And maybe that's just a noob mistake that I've made, but we'll move on from it. So I am going to make this my base and probably have a storage system that I have underneath here as well. 
so I've moved the villagers to a different location. Now out here I've got a lovely space and I'm planning on putting an apothecary tower and like shop and having a cleric live here and then deep underground there's going to be something creepy going on. I've set myself up a villager breeder I know I said I wasn't going to but as I said I'm still a noob at this and I've learned my lessons and these things whilst look pretty are actually a pain. I've moved all of my villagers into here. So here they are for now protected in here. I've done a bit more breeding and I've got some snowy villagers. They are so cute. Hi dude. Hi. And then I got some more plains ones but you know you'll do. I love you too. I promise. I love all my children. Yes yes yes. So I've popped them in here for now just to keep them safe but they're actually going to go down here as kind of a little holding space before I add them into bigger builds later on. So this is our villager breeder and I've got a really cool idea of how I'm going to decorate this and I'm going to take you through it shortly and then in here is where I'm going to have the zombification center and we're going to decorate this room too. So let's grab some resources and get started on this room. So it has been a few hours now and I've collected some resources as you can see they are all jumbled up here and that is because I've spent some time decorating in here. Hello guys you're very very loud aren't you? So this is where I'm going to be storing the villagers for when they go and get their zombification done in that room over there. Although I'm leaning more towards having a trading hall in here, it might be easier. So that's why I've decorated it quite a lot in here, just in case I do want to turn it into my official trading hall. Hello guys. So and I like the floor that I've got here as well. So I've used a bit of deep slate tile, deep slate bricks and the smooth basalt that you get from amethyst geodes and then some of these chiseled bricks look like screaming faces. Now the idea is that this is supposed to be an experimenting center on all of the villagers so you know they're trapped in here doing all of their jobs. Some of them are trapped up here breeding and then through here they're going to be zombified as well and I've made a start in here with the pillars going up here and I'm going to have a brewing station. I think the next step is going to be getting all of this floor done. I can't breed the villagers until I get the rest of this floor in because I need to change that bit under there. And I think I'm going to have all of this type of floor going the whole way through here. So let's set to getting that done. So some more progress has been made. I've got all of the floor in here and in this room here. And I've also started to decorate the roof. And I've added some crying obsidian up here, which I think looks amazing as it drips down. And considering that this room is supposed to be underneath the apothecary tower, I quite like that some of the magic that's happening in there is like leaking down into here. We're going to have two dungeons here. I don't know if it's going to work as I've got villagers here, but I want to put a zombified villager and maybe a zombie or a skeleton in here. I'm hoping because they don't have line of sight that it won't affect the breeding process, but we'll just have to see how that goes. In here, I've gone for more of a red theme as opposed to the kind of bluey green and purple theme that we've got going on in here just to add a little bit of contrast to each of these rooms. I don't actually have a plan for how any of this is going to turn out. What I found is that as I'm building the ideas start flowing and that's when I find it easier to get all of this to come together. I've also textured this wall and I'm going to make all of the walls look a bit like this. So I'm going to carry on and get all of the walls sorted and get the roof done and everything in here. And then... Most of the interior is now done. I have just left this wall here because I have my stairs going up here so I can get villagers in and out and so I can get a zombie in and out as well. So in here I've just um, decorated with some bookshelves and some barrels. I've got all of the equipment I'm going to need to trade with the villagers that's going to go here. I might need to make a double chest at some point. I've just added these twisty vines here for now just so there's something against this wall because otherwise it just makes me feel a bit sad that it's empty. I've also decorated the dungeon cells as well. So they've got a cauldron, a bed and some candles. This is how we're going to get our zombie into the zombification area. And through here I finished decorating in here. This is where the villagers are going to come and be zombified and we're going to get a zombie in here. He will be named Sid. <laughs> and then I've just decorated this as our potion and brewing area. So I've got some nether wart here. I am going to put some lava in here. I've put the bars there to remind me because I am likely to forget otherwise. I've added some crystals here as well because part of the story of this area is that all of the crystals are what provide all of the magical properties for the area so that's what makes all the crops grow that's why I've been popping them in the floor as well and our next build is going to include a little bit more of that backstory around those crystals so yeah I just now need to get a zombie in here 
try and lure him down into the dungeon. So it's only 10 o'clock at the moment, so I've got a little bit of time. I think I'm also just going to need to shut off my villagers so no zombies can get in there for now. But I am really happy with how this whole area is coming together. Let me know what you think as well too down in the comments. But now it's time to go and get our zombie, to go and find Sid, our little helper. What could possibly go wrong? So Sid has made his way in here. Hello dude. Thankfully it wasn't too hard to collect him and I didn't die either. He has acquired a button that he has found strewn across the floor and he has had an off camera escapee moment when I was testing this out and ended up going in the minecart. So let's see how this goes. Hey Sid. The next thing we need to do is to brew up our first lot of potions. So I've just gone and filled up these cauldrons. Now, if I am correct, oh, I haven't filled up one of them. Never mind. So if I am correct, all we need is some blaze rods or some blaze powder. And then a fermented spider eye, which I believe is a mushroom, sugar and spider eye. I have been killing a few spiders if I've been out and about. Haha, -ha, fermented spider eye. Okay, so this in theory should make a potion of weakness. Let's see. It does indeed. And now we need to go and get hold of some gunpowder. This is the part that I forgot about. I don't have too much gunpowder. And I also don't like killing creepers. 28 gunpowder, that's not too bad. That will get us through for now. So let's add the gunpowder to make this a splash potion. Excellent. Splash potion of weakness. Oh, and we got an advancement too. So now we need to go and acquire our first victim and see if this all works out. Are you ready, Sid? Are you ready for your first job? I'm going to go and get Noah for you. He doesn't know his name is Noah, but that is what he shall be named. Test subject number one shall be Noah. And maybe let's block this up as well. So I don't end up with any nasty surprises. Hello, Noah. Would you like to come with me? Come on then, Noah. Let's go. You are going to be test subject number one. You're coming to do a very important job for me. There's no need to be worried. Gonna be fine. Oh, run away, run away, run away. <gasps> oh, you're not looking too good there. It's okay. We'll fix you. So now I need my golden apple and my splash potion. So remember this correctly. Splash potion, apple. Look at us, Noah. Best buds. <laughs> you you don't look too happy with me. I promise it'll all be over soon. Now we just wait. Noah! What's happened? Oh, your pumpkin trade is down. Your carrot and potato one could be a little bit lower. That's the one that I was looking for, but I don't really have enough resources to send you again, so you can go back on your way. There you go, Noah. All sorted. And I have to be honest. I'm really proud of myself. This is the first time that I have cured villagers, hello candle, without having outside help. The last time I did the villager curing thingamabobby, I was on an SMP and I didn't have to go to the nether and gather any of those resources. All I had to do was pay diamonds. But this time I've done it all by myself, despite the fact that I died twice in the nether, lost everything, had to recuperate and all of this has been done by myself. I'm feeling very proud. So now I am going to cure the other villager and then we need to get them into the carrot and potato farm 
And finally, I will have a sustainable source of emeralds. Good job, Sid. We're going to come and bring you another friend now. Right, Milo? Yes, you will be named Milo. Now it's your turn. Noah will tell you it was all fine. He had a wonderful trip to the spa. Why do they look so worried? It makes me feel really bad. Oh, Milo. You're not looking too happy there, are you? It's all right, mate. I've got the perfect cure for you here. One of these. And one of these. And you have made a full recovery too. I am just going to throw some potatoes at you and see if you'll take them for me. Have you taken my potatoes? That's great. I think it's time to take you to your new home. Right, come on then, Milo. You are going to be my potato guy. That's it. Nearly there. And there you go. Welcome to your life as a potato farmer. Let me just give you some more potatoes so you can be chock full of them. Hello, Derek. Now it's time to do the same for your friend on the other side. I'm just going to go and get Noah for you so you've got a friend as well. And you've got another guy over there. He hasn't told me his name, so if you can find out for me, let me know. Right, Noah, before we go somewhere, I've got lots of carrots for you. That's excellent. Hopefully your inventory is full of carrots and that's all you'll provide me. Right, I'm going to take you to your new paradise. You're one of the lucky ones. You get to leave here. And let's go. Yeah, a new adventure and this time it won't hurt, I promise. And here you are, Noah. This is your new beautiful home. And Milo's just over here brooding. Hi, Milo. Are you at one with the bees and nature? Now I just need to see if my plan's going to work. Are they going to pass the potatoes and carrots to the villagers in the little boxes there? And are the bees going to help to pollinate all of the potatoes and carrots? On first inspection, it looks like that's what's happening. Well done, you. Are you passing him the carrots? <gasps> you are. Oh my goodness, it's a success. Yes, you two can never meet or share any kind of food, but you can stare at each other longingly from the distance. That is all we've got time for today. It looks like our carrot, potato and bee farm is going to be a success. And I've successfully zombified some villagers, survived a nether and created a whole new zombification area. Possibly villager trading hall. I'm going to sit on this one. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye!